when that series you know ends, you're probably thinking about not only the series, how it ended, the regular season. W- what's going through your mind? Are you like, do you have a thought of, all right, I have to do this better next year if I'm going to take this next step? Like, w- what what jumps to your mind? I mean, I think the same thing every year. Uh, just being a better shooter. Um, I think that that if I was a better shooter, I'd have been on the floor more. You know what I'm saying? Like just game yeah. six and game seven. So I think that that's kind of been the emphasis. Um, I mean, I think that even the end of the day after the game, I was kind of like, all right, like I got to focus on this. Like throughout the whole summer, like talk to the best shooter coaches. Like now I work out with uh, Brandon Payne, the same guy that works out Steph. So it was like now I'm getting pointers from Steph, talking to Steph about like, yo, how do you – like what makes you a great shooter? Like how do you breathe? Like what are your – what are you looking at? Like different questions like that, just picking his brain that I actually picked his brain the other day. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause the one thing about it as a shooter, you gotta, gotta be relaxed. And I was never relaxed when I shoot until, until I started to work out with Brandon Payne. He started telling me to relax when I shoot. And I didn't really know how to do that. And he was kind of explaining, like, you just gotta breathe. Like, and then, you know, when I was shooting, I was to realize like, dang, I really don't breathe. I kind of like hold my breath and I'm not really relaxed. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of yeah. like tensed up the whole time. Cause I'm already like a, I'm already like a twitchy guy, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm strong, twitchy, so I'm already like tight. So as you breathe when you shoot, it makes it easier. It makes it more softer. And I asked Steph the other day, like, how do you breathe? Because it's harder for me to breathe through my nose when I shoot. I breathe through my mouth, but he breathed through his nose. And I was also asking, like, why did he look at the ball when he shoot? Like, it's it's just a little different things like that that makes me want to become a better shooter. And I knew if I was a better shooter, I would have been on the floor. So I, after that game, I was like, I got to become a better shooter so I can be in those situations where I'm – in the game most of the time because I'm I think I'm the best defender so I got to be able to guard people like Steph uh, so he won't so if that fit if he does get 50 it's a harder 50 or I mean you can't really stop Stephen Curry it ain't possible but you can make it a little bit harder on him I mean I think that yeah I think that's where kind of my mindset was this is it's so it's so fascinating hearing you talk about the techniques and like just the smallest things like learning how to breathe when you're actually shooting so besides the the breathing, what what else has been the the biggest tweak within your shooting fundamentals or your technique? Also, I think that uh, last year when I was shooting, I never squeezed my core, so I was always kind of like bent over when I shot. And then when I was shooting, when I was go up to shoot, I kind of try to get back straight. Um, but I'm so bent over, I'm trying to get back straight, so I'm leaning the whole time. Like I'm like shooting, like it's kind of hard to explain. You have to actually see it, but it's like when I'm leaning over, yeah, and I'm trying to shoot back. Like my back is kind of like I'm like tight, basically. But now as I shoot, I'm like squeezing my core. So now I'm like already straight, straight up and down the whole time. So now when I shoot, it's already it's like not like a. And I also think that's why I, the arc went so high because when I'm bending over, I'm trying to get back up, yeah, and I'm I'm squeezing like this, so I'm shooting the ball like this. So, like, when I squeeze my core now, I'm kind of, like, shooting it a straight ball. Like, I, I do a lot of – this summer, I ain't gonna lie, I've been doing a lot of, like, technical stuff. Like, every time I shoot now, I, like, have the no on so I can – so it tells me what the arc is every single time. And and now I don't I don't even count makes now that's above 49. Like, now my shot is more 48. It's kind of hard to explain if you don't know the no, but it's, like, 45 is a, a perfect arc. Okay. Like, that's, that's, that's the perfect arc. And now my shots are only, like – 47 and the highest I go is 48. So like now it's like, I'm kind of keeping in that range where it's like 45 to 48 the whole time. Like, and I talked to Brandon, the guy that I work out with, it's like the left to right. It's something called left to right on the no. Like, it's so like negative on the negative side. It means you miss, le- well, it means you make left and you make right. Um, I don't know how to explain this. Yeah. So if it's negative, if it's negative, it means you shooting left. If it's, if it's just regular positive, basically it means it's right. So now I don't even count shots when I'm making this past negative four or four. I'm saying just little things like that that yeah. I took from Brandon where he told me, oh, you should do this. And I think it's made me, made me a more comfortable and better shooter just because like, I don't even count shots as negative five or past five. Even though it goes in, like yeah. it's still you still don't count it because you got to challenge yourself. You got to because mentally it's like, man, I made the shot like I should go by. But you're also thinking about like you're working out. You know what I'm saying so it's different. Like you got to challenge yourself a little bit because it ain't a real really a real game. So you kind of got to mentally challenge yourself in the workout. So that's what I've been doing, like, literally the whole summer. Um, and I think this helped me become a better shooter, like, so, like so much. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting, Davion, because I asked you how – we asked you how fast it took you to get over that loss. And you're like, oh, I got over it that night. But I don't think you did because no, – like, like, man. I'm telling you. No, <laughs> but you say that, but you look at what you did. You went, I, if I – 
if I want to be on the floor at the end of games and playoff games, I have to be better. And that's right. because of the result of the series, though. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. you yeah, you right internalize that. that. And although you weren't angry about the result of the series because you're like, oh, we can build off this. We can get better. You right. you want to be out there in a game six, right. in a game seven. And that's what's so crazy about this league is, like, we you know, we're talking about the playoffs and we're like, you got to have a guy like Davion out there or even like a Jared Vanderbilt with the Lakers. We talk about how good you guys are defensively. But in the playoffs, man, they – Teams expose yep. your weaknesses like so 100%. hard. Like all of a sudden 100%. they're like, you know what, Davion, we're not even going to guard you. And then that right. changes everything for the offense. And then you have right. to like be honest with yourself, reflect and look in the mirror and go, all right, like if I'm going to take this next step, I have to make some serious changes. That's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. not only 100%. is that hard to do. So how quickly did you meet up with Brandon then? <laughs> Literally, because I end up, Literally after, right after, because uh, I ended up switching agencies. Yeah. So I, I'm not with CAA no more. I'm with Octagon, and Octagon is agency with Steph Curry. So it kind of, actually everything happens for a reason because, like, I didn't even know Steph Curry with Octagon until I got to Octagon, you know what I'm saying? So literally probably, like, I probably, I went home for, like, a week. Uh, I went home for a week, but I was talking to him, telling him, like, all right, we're going to start, whatever. Well, my uncle was talking to him. And then after that, it kind of was like uh, when I started working out, I would chat with him a little bit. My uncle would chat with him. And then when I got to Atlanta, that's when I really started working out with him. I worked out with him for a week um, just to see how things go, like a week straight or whatever. And then after that, it was kind of like we kept in contact. Like even if I'm not with – even if I'm not with him, he send me like send me different workouts to do. He'd tell me like, all right, make sure you focus on this. You know, Make sure you focus on this. Just to talk to him because I know I ain't going to always be with him because, I mean, he's always the stuff, so I ain't really going to – yeah. always be with them but when he's in town like close to california i'll go to i'll probably go to san francisco one of these days just to work out and just to get connected back in um but we kind of been in contact literally like the whole summer a little bit 